Uh, so my name is Björn Flintberg. I come from the Research Institute of Sweden. Um, and I've been following the development of the internet since basically the first visual browsers back in 94, something like that. Um, so I've, I've seen it from, from the beginning. I work a bit with blockchain now, especially with regards to educational credentials, where Alex and I have some work together, uh, with learning in general, and, and we also work a lot of the rights with desk information, and my colleague Ole can speak more to that. Um, I mean, it's all about the power structures, isn't it? Who has the power? Who has the power of the algorithms? Who has the power of the content? Who has the power? And our, our own weighting system. Uh, I think somebody mentioned that. The, the way we weight and value who says what and in what medium. And there's been a shift there, I think, that particularly challenges uh, old media. Because it used to be that back prior to the internet, the weight of what was being said had a lot to do with where it was published. So if the BBC put out some news, we knew instantly, yes, it's from the BBC, it's believable. Um, uh, where, so if it was in a local paper or a blog or something early on, that was like, yeah, maybe that's true, maybe it's not. Um, and that mean, meant that the brand built trust by itself. Now, that is not gone completely. There's still a difference between different outlets. But there's another thing that's come up along with the influences and the uh, collaborative creation and the ability to create news and fake news outlets. And not even just fake news outlets, but outlets of dubious news sources or news sources grounded not in independent journalism, but in, in political opinion making. So this is an independent news source. It just happens to be very alt-right and conservative. They do everything to present as just any other news source. And while, you know, freedom of the press and freedom of opinion and so on. So, so you have this challenge of who is talking to you and where. And you can see a trend among younger people that what their peers are saying becomes more and more important. You know, you trust the people around you like we have for centuries. It's just that that community is growing larger and larger thanks to, thanks to the internet. So I think that we are going into a situation where the relevance of what is being published top down versus what is being created from the bottom up is really changing uh, the balance of this. And I think one of the greatest dangers that we're facing is this creation of content uh, that we can track and put on the blockchain and say, you know, X said Y, but that doesn't matter. If you look back to the last presidential campaign in the US, for instance, uh, you would have blatant lies caught on video, you know, when, when, when uh, one of the candidates would say something on video and then two weeks later deny that he had ever said it, even though it was on video. And millions of people said, yeah, no, he's right, they're wrong. Fake media. And when you have that kind of situation, when you have sort of the deliberate creation of content and information that is more designed to create a certain type of opinion, it becomes very hard to differentiate who, who has the truth, what is the truth. And with that need, you know, we need to replace you guys with three philosophers to, to go into that one, right? So, but I think there's a couple of things that can be done. Um, I think the blockchain has a little bit of a part of the solution, like you said. Um, and there are some specific blockchains that work with news outlets. I think it's one called Chainlink that worked with Reuters and had a big uh, program on that, uh, on, on doing, putting news items on, on the blockchain. Um, and as you mentioned, that doesn't, it gives transparency, but it can't really validate the truth of the content of the statement, just validate that it has been said and by whom. I think knowledge is power. Um, in the first speech you had was showing the algorithms, showing how they work, understanding how they work, being informed is really the first key to being able to affect it. Um, and the second key is that we actually have another tool, just as deep learning and AI is being used to sort of propagate the algorithm and, and change this, I believe that we're going to see in the coming years, much like we had in the past with ha uh, virus, hackers with viruses versus antivirus companies trying to balance this out, I'm pretty sure that there will be, an, uh, and there probably are a few already, AI power being put into fact-checking. So AIs and algorithms created to check other algorithms and to validate other algorithms. So you're going to see this battle between sort of creating to certain types of content uh, versus denying it. 
And I'll give you an example from my small, small, small hometown. I live in a village with 800 people. And there was a horrible murder um, last year. Uh, some kids who'd been harassing an old lady one night um, threw st rocks through her windows and then they left and they come back and they turned up, you know, burning the house down with her inside. Uh, now, these kids were between 13 and 17 years old, four of them, two, two boys, two girls. Um, and um, the two girls were actually my neighbors across the street. Within six hours, there were news up in m most of the alt-right medias um, speculating, not lying, but speculating on who had done these murders. And since there were a lot of immigrants living in that small village, uh, you know, they were not saying that there was the immigrants, they were just hinting that it might have been done by these uh, uh, Somali groups that were living in the city. And to illustrate the article, they had put these silhouette pictures of three Somali boys, completely you know, disconnected from the text. It didn't even say in the article that these were the perpetrators or anything, but the illustration of the article was a silhouette picture. And what was more disconcerting was not that they published this in certain media forums, but within an hour, that article showed up, because I started doing Google searches on this, because it was very close to heart for me. Within an hour or two hours, I found articles translated that article into Spanish, Portuguese, German, French, all over different alt-right media, perpetuating throughout the networks of these alt-right media outlets. So what you had was one piece of information that was not untrue in itself, though it was highly speculative, combined with an image that further provided proof to that, spread out across six or seven nations in six or seven different languages, and God knows how many hundred thousands of people read that and watched that. They never got the follow-up two weeks later. They never got the story about it was uh, two, two boys from, uh, they were in a, one of these youth delinquency homes that we have outside of, of the village, uh, and two girls from town. They never got that story. They just saw that three Somali boys had burned down an old woman's home. See what the immigrants are doing. And so this is one of the challenges that you have and I think that the way to, to combat that type of disinformation when you don't know what the truth is, the only real tool is knowledge and building the relationship with people that you trust around you. And then we can start applying the technology, whether it's blockchain or using AI to our advantage to evaluate things or uh, using an ID that can issue a, a verified ID. I know the EU is working on something in part of the digital decade, which is a program running to 2030, where they want to have basically a European, uh, similar to what you're talking about, a European ID that will be valid for all EU citizens and so on. So there are a couple of tools that can happen. But as was mentioned yesterday, uh, I think it was your speech actually about how to take action versus waiting for the government. Governments move slowly. You know, it takes time to change legislation. It takes time to change behavior. But in the singular instances, in the actual events, you can act quite quickly. Uh, you can come up with counter proposals. You can come up with fact checking and so on. So we can affect individual things that happen and then we just have to trudge on moving, moving slowly with the things that take time to change. So I think, I think there's a lot of things to take away from it. But again, I don't have two days, but I would love to, to you know, go into this even further with the technology and how it can also help us and be our own leverage in this.